Hi everyone, this is Eagle News. I'm Ken Cruz in Washington. It's Saturday, January 21, 2023, here in the nation's capital. The week's recap begins with the need to create a special council to accelerate licensing and use of effective novel vaccines against tuberculosis, a move to curb an epidemic that kills hundreds of thousands every year, for Salferia reports. The World Health Organization says the tuberculosis epidemic shows no sign of slowing down. In 2021 alone, WHO says approximately 10.6 million people fell sick with TB and 1.6 million died. This despite countries committing to end the disease by 2030 as part of the Sustainable Development Goals. In response, the health organization says it will establish a new tuberculosis vaccine accelerator council. The announcement comes at a high-level panel on TB at the World Economic Forum. WHO says drug resistance continues to be a major problem. Close to half a million people develop drug-resistant TB every year. The council is to facilitate the licensing and use of effective novel TB vaccines, and currently BCG is the only licensed TB vaccine. It provides moderate efficacy that prevents severe form of TB in infants and young children. However, WHO says BCG falls short in protecting adolescents and adults who account for close to 90% of TB transmissions globally. A recent study reveals a vaccine with at least 50% efficacy among adolescents and adults could avert up to 76 million new TB cases, 8.5 million deaths, 42 million courses of antibiotic treatment, and 6.5 billion U.S. dollars in costs faced by TB-affected households. WHO says a vaccine that is 75% effective has the potential to prevent up to 110 million new TB cases and 12.3 million deaths. Later this year, there will be a second United Nations high-level meeting on TB to correct setbacks in the TB response. Russell Feria, Washington, D.C. Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In other news, Pennsylvania's new governor has been sworn in Tuesday. Governor Joss Shapiro is the first since 1966 to succeed a member of his own party. Myla Simbula tells us more. Freedom, democracy, and love of country. Three simple truths new Pennsylvania governor Josh Shapiro promises to keep. The 48th governor of Pennsylvania takes his oath of office outside the Harrisburg capital. He was sworn in by State Supreme Court Chief Justice Deborah Todd on a stage erected behind the ornate capital in Harrisburg. Joining the ceremony are U.S. Senators Bob Casey and John Fetterman, ex-governors, members of Congress, and several thousands others bundled against the cold winter day. Shapiro succeeds term limited Democratic Governor Tom Wolf. He is the first governor of Pennsylvania since 1966 to be elected to succeed a member of his own party. Since winning the election, Shapiro has followed his promises of bipartisan ideals by staffing high level cabinet positions almost exclusively with experienced public officials and attorneys. They include prominent Republicans. Myla Zimbulan, Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In the Canadian province of Ontario, new public health care plans raise concern, especially among medical workers. In Toronto, Joshua Santeliana tells us more. This week, Premier Doug Ford announced new investments in public health care that caused some concern in Ontarians. The Ontario government is looking to add and invest in more surgical and diagnostic centers, which include both profit and not-for-profit clinics. It will also allow more diagnostic imaging procedures such as MRI and CT scan, screening procedures such as colonoscopy and endoscopy, and will see more hip and knee replacement surgeries done by 2024. However, several healthcare professionals express their concerns on how this plan may result to patients paying out of pocket at for profit health centers. Under this possible legislation, patients may be billed privately for procedures that are usually free under public healthcare. It may also cause staffing shortages at public hospitals. 
nurses and physicians may leave the public sector for better pay at for-profit centers. This plan is still waiting approval and if passed by February, it will be made into an official legislation in the province. Joshua Santayana, Toronto, Ontario, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Several stories from Thomas I. Likeness today, from TB survivors fighting big pharma, to young Egyptian entrepreneurs turning trash into treasure, to a bottle of ketchup helping keep alive a man lost at sea, these and more on Correspondent at Large. And now news and commentary from around the globe. We start with the medical file today. Two tuberculosis survivors taking on Big Pharma. They're challenging the patent extension of the drug Betaquiline. It's made by pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson. Metaquiline is a medication used to treat TB. A final hearing in the case wrapped up this week in India. One of the petitioners is Nandita Venkatesan. She says Metaquiline has been around for some time now. Venkatesan says it's time that a generic version of the drug is made available, which she says would be more affordable. It is uh, $45 right now, the lowest price, and it can come down to anywhere between $8 to $17. Which is, which is a drastic re reduction in price. And I just think that it is something that has to be done now because of the fact that it's been some time now since the drug is in the market. J&J's patent expires this July. A decision is expected next month. You know, until the pandemic, tuberculosis was the world's biggest infectious disease killer. It was then, of course, overtaken by COVID, but TB is on the rise again due to disruptions in diagnosis and treatment. Some young entrepreneurs in Egypt saw a problem, turned it into an opportunity, and in doing so, they've proven the old adage, you know, one person's garbage is a, another person's gold. That plastic waste that we all discard is the feedstock for this factory on the outskirts of Cairo. Workers at the Tile Green Workshop transform things like fast food wrappers, water bottles, and similar trash into paving blocks. They're used in walkways and garages. These blocks are an alternative to concrete. After it is collected, the plastic waste is shredded, mixed with some other materials. And then, under high heat, it is pressure molded into interlocking blocks. The finished product. Farmers worldwide are always at the mercy of the forces of nature. In Argentina, drought is threatening this year's harvest. The South American country has suffered through three years of drought. These fields you see here on the screen, well, they're, they're as dry as a dog biscuit. Nothing can grow without moisture. Soybean yields are half of what they normally are, and that will have a severe effect on the economy. Exports will be reduced as well. Domestic supplies are down. And this is not good news for a country that's been dealing with raging inflation and an economic crisis. And here's the story of a man who was lost at sea for nearly a month. And this is how he survived. Elvis Francois is from the Dominican Republic. He says a bottle of ketchup kept him alive for the 24 days that he was adrift in the Caribbean Sea. The ordeal ended when he spotted a Colombian Navy ship and signaled it with a mirror that he had. The Navy vessel and a merchant ship rushed to rescue him. He's reported in good health. But how did he end up in this mess? Well, last month, Francois was repairing a sailboat on the island of St. Martin. It's in the West Indies. He was swept overboard by bad weather. Now he finds himself adrift in this sailboat. Francois has no knowledge of navigation doesn't know how to maneuver the ship. There's no cell phone service in the middle of the sea. He's completely lost. So Francois, what was going through your mind in this situation? 24 days, no land, nobody to talk to, don't know what to do, don't know where you are. It was rough. Um, a certain time I lose hope. I think about my family. The only rations he had were that bottle of ketchup, some garlic powder and bullion cubes. He 
He mixed them with water to survive. And I leave you today with these images from the sea. Japanese divers shot this video of a 2.5 meter giant squid. It was off the coast of that country. These creatures are known to live in the waters around Japan. Occasionally, they wash ashore. However, seeing them alive in the wild, well, that's pretty rare. A truly amazing creature. I'll be back in seven days, and in the meantime, I wish you all peace, joy, and happiness in the ensuing week. Thomas I. Likeness, correspondent at large, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres calls on countries to translate their promises into tangible actions. Promises of free, equitable, and quality education for all. Here's Arlene Ocampo on Learning Curve. January 24 is the International Day of Education. In observance, the United Nations sends out a message to invest in people and prioritize education. In a message, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says education is a fundamental human right, the bedrock of societies, economies, and every person's potential. However, Gutierrez says without adequate investment, the potential will fail. He says investment is critical to achieving sustainable development goal number four. Sustainable development goal number four is free, equitable, and quality education for all by 2030. Gutierrez says now is the time for all countries to translate their commitments into concrete actions. Actions that create supportive and inclusive learning environments for all students. He says now is also the time to end all discriminatory laws and practices that hinder access to education. The UN chief calls on the de facto authorities in Afghanistan in particular to reverse the ban on access to secondary and higher education for girls. Gutierrez calls this outrageous and self-defeating. According to UNICEF, over 600 million children and adolescents across the globe are unable to attain minimum proficiency levels both in reading and mathematics. This despite two-thirds of them being in school. And worse is the case for out-of-school children because their foundational skills in literacy and numeracy are further from grasp. Arlene Ocampo, Washington, D.C., Eagle News, we live in extraordinary times. The Asian American Expo offers visitors the opportunity to experience food, entertainment, and shopping from a variety of Asian and Asian American groups. In Pomona, California, Eva and Alan tour this popular event held every year. Here's Color My World. In its 41st year, the Asian American Expo continues to bring together the richness of Asian cultures. From performances, anime, and sneakers, this expo stretches out over seven exposition halls and outdoor pavilions. A lot of hours, a lot of time we contribute in the practice. So for this dancing, actually, we are practicing every week and every day for more than one hour. Uh, recently two months to practice those programs. Also uh, for this address, so we do the happy and the celebration and the, the other one we did this one because California is uh, need the rainy. So we use the umbrella. We did the umbrella this dancing. Taiko is a Japanese word. It's two combinations of kanji characters or Chinese characters. And so there's the word tai, which means big, and then ko, which is like a sound or a drum. You know, so taiko literally means drum, like big drum. Taiko is a very fun musical activity. It's also an athletic activity. So as you notice, um, we're in a stance, you know, like we're kind of grounding ourselves so that we can be um, ready to hit the drum. Because when you hit the drum, it hits back, you know, and if you're not in a good stance, like you're gonna fall. You know, so if you like to be athletic, if you're musical, or if you want to try music, I would say that drumming is a very good opportunity to get started. We want to showcase the beauty and uh, culture of Chinese culture and we want to demonstrate uh, 
diversity of American, as Asian American, we are proud of our heritage. We can see a lot of uh, performing and uh, different kinds of performing. You know, you see it's like I have a um, Chinese uh, dragon and uh, for Chinese dance. You know, America, so we need, you know, everybody happy to live here. So we need to let uh, American other people know our culture. So it's just like uh, other other nationally have their own culture. We need to let them know our culture. Checking out every attraction and vendor in just one day is a pretty tall order. There's just too many of them. Fortunately, the Asian American Expo is set to return in 2024. And for those of you keeping count, that'll be year 42 for this event. Evan Allen, Pomona, California, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. A regular at the annual Asian American Expo, OCM Globe Incorporated takes over an exposition hall. It brings authentic and trending Chinese food and ingredients to the general public. Eva Allen again on Mind Your Business. Authentic Chinese food? It's not an overseas dream. Because in cities coast to coast, OCM Globe Incorporated brings known and rising Chinese brands to the American dinner table. OCM is the food distribution company. What we do is we bring in the most up and coming, the in and the, uh, the newest items from China, including snacks, drinks, and even ingredients to America, and we introduce it to the American public. Um, we do a lot of um, marketing things to uh, so to educate the general public about uh, what's in in China and what's the good taste or some uh, authentic taste that the Chinese people like. We bring in all different types of brands, but we have traditional styles, which are for maybe uh, people who have been here a lot uh, uh, for, for a long time, or maybe like for the older generation, including uh, Ying Jingqian uh, and also like uh, Wang Laoji. These are the brands that um, everyone have known all their lives, so when they see it here, they enjoy it a lot. But we also bring in some really new brands, including Weilong and uh, Genki. Uh, these two brands, all the young people maybe who just come here or people who are newly immigrated, they recognize and it's something that they always like and try. OCM from OCM, not only are we doing um, not only are we doing Chinese products. Right now, if you look around, you see that we have products from Korea, from Japan, and also from other Southeast Asia countries. So what we strive to do is bring in all the different authentic tastes to the U.S. And so that's why uh, we also want to promote it to the general public. That's why you can find us in more, more mainstream, mainstream supermarkets. But um, the reason why you have to come here to Hall 5 is because we will bring in everything that you see in 10 different markets and all here. Flexing its promotional arm, OCM also boasts products from countries like Korea and Japan. All in an effort to connect palates in the U.S. with the genuine flavors of Asia. Eva and Alan, Pomona, California, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Now it's time for an espresso break. Jane Kathleen Gregorio takes us on a sweet tour of a San Antonio, Texas cafe. It specializes in churros, coffee, and more. Take a look. If you love the taste of the sweet, crunchy fried dessert known as churros, and you also love coffee, what better place to indulge your cravings than at the I Love Churros coffee shop in San Antonio, Texas? This picturesque cafe in the northwest side offers fresh made from scratch churros with a variety of sauces for dipping, ranging from chocolate ganache and dulce de leche to strawberry, pineapple, condensed milk, and much more. The cafe also offers a selection of pastries, coffee, ice cream, and gourmet torta sandwiches. With indoor dining and outdoor patio and artistic decor throughout, the I Love Churros Coffee Shop provides a great atmosphere for insta-worthy selfies or a cozy venue to relax with family and friends. So I'm from uh, Mexico City and uh, I just wanted to do something 
very similar to what they have over there in churros and then the coffee. We make it from scratch, uh, something from Mexico, we make it very traditional. And I know it pairs really good with coffee, so we brought like a really nice coffee, which is also, which is also with a purpose because we give 10% to a, a profit to a benefit for kids. We make our own cakes in home. They're not very sweet, they're very light. Uh, we also uh, sell um, ice cream that we buy from uh, our partner, that he's from Mexico as well. He used very good quality of milk, so they're very, very creamy and delicious too. And I think uh, we look for ingredients that we can come out with a really traditional uh, torta and they've been very good and very successful here. People really liked it I and mean, they see the difference between the tortas from San Antonio and the Mexico. So we, we're trying to make the tortas and we want to make it as authentic as we can. I'm one of the partners, so we have, there is two owners here. So it's me and his name is Moses Hernandez. And uh, he's got a very good eye on this because it's very unique. And the, the colors, the way that he merged colors and the decoration, I think he's been a big, big success for the, how the place looks. In addition to the two owners, Chef Adrian's son, Patricio Fuentes, can often be seen at the cafe providing excellent customer service. Hi, my name is Patricio Fuentes. I work here at I Love Churros. I am an employee and we are here every day, seven days a week, serving fresh churros. So come on down and get some churros, coffee, and some cakes, okay? Thank you. I'm Kathleen Gregorio, Eagle News, San Antonio, Texas. We live in extraordinary times. And after having dessert, let's go to our main dish. Who's gonna stop us, right? This week, we'll show you how to make a, this very easy, but definitely tasty, Japanese type of skewer chicken, yakitori. Here's our very own Aika Era on Behind the Counter. Hey, I'm Aika, and welcome back to Behind the Counter, where we see easy and tasty meals be brought to life. by sticking to some delicious, healthy recipes. And what better way to stick to it than with yakitori, a Japanese dish of grilled chicken on a skewer. for full recipes and if there's a dish that you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below. Catch us on EagleNewsLive.com on our Eagle News YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Check back next time when we go Behind the Counter. And before we let you go, here's our photo of the week. What better way to encourage consumerism than to be allowed to include your beloved furry family members while running errands? Just like coconut in this picture, Nearly 50 major retailers in the United States let owners bring their leashed and well-behaved dogs while they shop. 
Policies may vary between locations. Be sure to research and contact establishments beforehand. Thank you, Abby Figueroa, for sharing that photo with us. And thank you all for joining us again. If there are stories or topics you want us to share with you, just comment below. View, like, share our other shows. City Limits with Alan Bustle Yahe. Connected with Dr. David. Take a seat and join us with Anna Kui. Plate Date with Mike Hudson and Friends. Plus, Journey, Stories of Filipinos in Canada with Kathleen, and you know it, best last name ever, Cruz. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, at Eagle News Live. I'm Ken Cruz. We live in extraordinary times. Happy weekend, everyone.